Welcome to the Rocking Your Roll Show with me, Jenny Garrett, executive coach and author. You know our show's all about women in business and I have someone from the US here today to tell us all about her journey, what she's achieved and share her nuggets of insight with you. Her name is Liz O'Donnell. Uh, Welcome Liz, how are you? Excellent, Jenny. Thanks for having me on the show. No problem at all. No problem at all. I'm really delighted because I know you're traveling at the moment. So it's great that you're able to spend some time with us. So tell us a bit about what you do. That would be really great, first of all. Excellent. So my day job is public relations. So I work with companies from uh, Fortune 10 all the way down to technology startups and I help them figure out how to go to market from a messaging standpoint what their story is and then work with the media to get that message amplified and social media as well so I run the East Coast operations of a West Coast agency and I head up social media Wow! and then, yeah so that's exciting yeah. and then my my passion job as I call it is writing I run a blog called Hello Ladies and I write about uh, women in the workplace and I write about women in politics and recently um, wrote a book based on the the writing I've been doing. That's that's brilliant and uh, I looked at your website today and I saw it was one of the the Forbes is it top 100 sites? Yeah yeah since I launched in 2009 I've been named one of the top 100 websites for women by Forbes every year which has been it's brilliant well done that's a real achievement isn't it considering that's not your day job <laughs> oh, no that's my you know what I don't mind waking up earlier staying up late because I love to do a job yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. tell me so tell us about your book tell us the title and um, what, it, what it's about sure so my book came out just a couple of weeks ago it's called mogul mom and maid the balancing act of the modern woman and um, it occurred to me I was writing so much about women's issues in the workplace about you know the pay gap and biases both overt and subtle and sexual harassment and all the different challenges women face how to get a mentor or a sponsor and it occurred to me in listening to the women around me that one of the biggest challenges women face in the workplace actually doesn't occur in the office it happens at home it's the fact that women do I know in the US the numbers are about 30% to 60% more time on housework and childcare, and I believe in the UK we're pretty on parity with that Absolutely. that gap. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah, so you decided to write about that, the thing that we possibly don't talk about. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So I decided to explore how the housework gap uh, impacts the career gap and you're absolutely right we don't talk about that because it's hard to talk about. Yes. You know, it's one thing to be angry with the boss and say, you know, he doesn't get it, he's not helping. But it's really difficult to be honest about that, you know, with your partner. Yeah. Because you don't set out for it to be that way. You just fall into these natural gender roles, I believe. Absolutely, absolutely. So, oh, it's going to be fascinating to read the, read the book, actually. I'm definitely going to get it. How, how, how did you come up with that title? Oh, this is actually a little bit embarrassing. Uh, the original <laughs> title was, um, I was going with either from the kitchen table to the conference table or from the bedroom to the boardroom, but right. I found that that was a pretty crowded uh, title. Right. There were a lot of women um, speaking, not, not necessarily books on that topic, but out speaking on that topic. So desperate for a title so that we could take the cover to print and no ideas. I one day was frustrated while I was writing and I switched over to play one of those bubble blasting games on the internet yes. you know, <laughs> where you just blow up little dots. And it came to me. So so here's a life lesson. Procrastination sometimes is really valuable. <laughs> Well, it's that thing, isn't it? As they say, isn't it? When you're in the shower, that's when the best ideas come. You know, when you move away from it, then then the then the ideas flow. Brilliant. Right. When you let go, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, did you always? What did you always want to be when you were growing up? Did you always want to be in PR? Did you always want to write? What did you? No, I never wanted to be. I still don't want to be in PR. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted to write. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a writer, and I right. got my degree in writing, and I started out as a journalist at a business magazine but two things one was I was making too little money to move out of my parents house okay. and uh, you know journalists just aren't paid well mm. uh, at least in the beginning and I um, felt like I was writing about the business world but had never actually been in it yeah so my plan was to leave for a while and come back but uh, I started in PR I started to make money and get promotions and I'm actually good you know despite my complaining about it <laughs> I'm actually very good at it mm. so I forgot I forgot for about 20 years Oh. what I was supposed to do yes yeah. gosh and then it came back so how did it come back did it just did you just start writing or 
Uh, it came back. It's almost a cliche, right? I was a middle-aged woman who needed to use her voice. Okay. Um, it came back after a really bad job experience. Right. I had left PR to be the VP of marketing at a company, and in that company, everything that women experience, all the negative stuff that women experience in the workplace happened to me. Oh, it was just gosh. a very bad environment. Well, the good news was I quit mm. and started freelancing and in that space I had working for myself, I started writing because I just needed to talk about these issues. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes we need that push, don't we? It was a not a so. good experience, but it pushed you in the right direction. Horrible at the time, but it yes. provided me so many good stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we need, a life experience. The bad stuff exactly. is that life experience. Exactly. And I never use names, but yes. I could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so exciting. And I think as an author, PR is going to be brilliant. You know, it's a brilliant experience for you, isn't it? You know, great skills you've got. And, you know, it's a natural fit for what I do. Um, you know, I just recently joined an agency. We're called Double Forte. And a lot of our clients are consumer products companies. And we know that 85 to 95 percent of those products are bought by women, right? Or women make 85 to 95 percent of the purchasing decisions, I should say. So I think my experience working with women and, you know, social media, it all, it all ties together nicely. And so I think that's a lesson there, too, that when you actually pursue what you're supposed to pursue and when you start to be more authentic in who you are and what you want to be, then doors open up yes love that yeah. absolutely yeah. love that so, takes a while to figure that out yes yeah so I, I wonder is that bad experience the sort of biggest challenge you faced in your career do you think that role where it was pretty awful yeah I think there were two I mean mm. there was one other um, but not quite as bad as this one I guess that probably was. You know, at the time I had two small kids. They were toddler age and you're just tired, right? You're just working all the time and you lose perspective when you get in it and it's really hard to see a way out yeah. because you just, you know, you get up and you hand the kids to work, you're in it, you're in it, you work late, you come home, you're tired, you start all over again and you're just, it's too hard to see a way out and what I did advice to any woman and part of the reason I wrote the book I don't want women to have to get to this point is I quit that job in October of 2008 mm -hmm. and if anyone remembers that was the beginning of the recession the right. really yeah a terrible time and I'm the sole breadwinner terrible yes. time to walk out the front door of the office but mm -hmm. I had to do it for me right for your sanity exactly yes <laughs> yeah so that was brave wasn't it brave really quite brave to do that it's all about perspective. It's either crazy or brave. I go with brave. I go with brave. If it works out, it's bravery, I think. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure you were determined to make it, make it, um, make I absolutely. it work. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the, you know, that's quite interesting. You brought in that you were the sole breadwinner at that point. Did that impact the decision making? Do you think in terms of your work life? Well, it certainly impacts your decision making in that you can't really make the decision alone. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always been, well, not always, but for most of my married life and career, I've been the sole breadwinner. It was just a, an arrangement he and I decided even before we had kids. That yes. makes sense for our natural abilities. So, um, and I don't feel a lot of pressure. I don't feel, you know, the mainstream media, the way they talk about the sole breadwinner and the stay-at-home man are just, sounds terrible. Yeah. I don't experience that. But it certainly makes you pause when you want to make a change. You yes. can't make changes as easily as, you know someone else might be able to yes absolutely absolutely yeah. I d uh, did a talk uh, last week and I um, this uh, there was a chap who was a stay-at-home father who was on the panel and he described his role as uh, you know when they have the Grand Prix and you have the person who changes the tires and then they go off again he That's described the, that as the role of the stay-at-home dad and I thought that was a lovely uh, you know a lovely image <laughs> that is an excellent analogy yeah, I like that yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, you, know, you can't do it. I mean, you can't do it alone, and I think that's one of the challenges. That's something that came up in the book: the challenges of couples where both are working and both are fully vested in their career. What gives? Yes. It's a hard, hard balance. Yeah, yeah. really, really tough. So, yeah. so thanks for sharing a couple of your challenges. I think that's been really helpful. Um, both times you've been courageous enough to sort of walk away before sort yeah. of you sold your soul or <laughs> completely, um, you know, destroyed yourself. Um, but also yeah. there's some resilience in that, some courage, but also some resilience, which means which, there's something inside you which says, you know what, I'll survive. I'll make it work. I'll do something right. about it. Right. Um, would you say that's a trait throughout your life that you've kind of always known that about yourself quite strong? person, resilient person? I'm not sure that I've known that I'm resilient, although I guess if I were to look back at the uh, 
the history, I would see that. But you know, you, you, it's hard to see your own strengths sometimes. Mm -hmm. I guess what I would say that I've always known is I'm not that worried about what I'm supposed to do right. and what people think. Yeah, there was another time in my career when I was working in technology, and um, it was after the dot com dot com bust. Another really bad time to leave your job, but I did that at that time too. Um, because I just I had lost the passion at that point, mm. and I decided to explore interior design, mm. and I uh, took a job selling furniture, and so I went from you know a six-figure salary, senior senior title, to wearing a name tag in a shop. Gosh. And so you know every day you have to kind of wake up and look in the mirror and say this is what you wanted. You could be those other things. Yes. You know that everything isn't as it appears, and own it. Mm. So, Yes, yeah. I love your story. Good for the resume, but definitely good for the soul. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and good when you're having interviews later on to talk about. Tricky <laughs> stories. <laughs> yeah. So it's just thinking about the sort of things that you've learned on your on your way. What tips might you give and uh, for women mm -hmm. maybe in the in the corp in corporate life or maybe yeah. to follow th they might be to follow their dreams because you're managing to do that alongside your your role as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a risky message I feel giving to women because we all have different financial circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the way I've mostly, you know, aside from those two moments that I call when I blew up my career, yeah. I mostly pursue my dreams with, you know, the security of a day job. Like right. right now, I don't mind getting up at five in the morning to promote the book because that's that's the passion piece. Yeah. And, you know, and I understand clearly that the day job, as I call it, that's the, that's the security piece for me and my family. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I would love to see more women pursue their dreams, but pursue them smartly, right? Yes. You have to have that safety net. Um, I would say the two lessons that I really want to get across to other women are the, the comparison piece, mm. um, how difficult it is in our society not to compare mm. ourselves to other women and to look at uh, what other women have and wonder, why don't I have that? Shouldn't I be there in life? You know, it's so hard. We see it from the the mother who chooses to stay home and the mother who chooses to go to work or the mother who doesn't choose to stay home or doesn't choose to go to work that's just their circumstances and I think years ago it was one thing we'd see celebrities you know yes. on, on covers of magazines and intellectually we knew they had a whole army of people they got paid to look that beautifully you know there was a nutritionist and a trainer and all that stuff but you know in here we sort of want and you know inside we sort of thought I wish I could look like that mm -hmm. but intellectually we knew you know it's not possible yes. now we have social media and we have Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook I think is the worst offender now I see you living this fabulous life because yes. you're putting your out there right and I yes. see my next neighbor going on vacation and baking cookies with the kids and 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 it's harder I think now with social media for us to not compare ourselves to what other women have um, but we have to stop because you know someone thin or rich or beautiful is right around the corner right yeah. I'd like to think about that some more because I think that's really interesting and um, a question you may have been asked before is who are your role models and I think that can be a challenge as well because role models are good because you aspire to be you know someone's fantastic right. and you right. aspire but they also need to be warts and all don't they because if they're sort of yeah it was easy for me and I could do this right. then again you find yourself not not measuring up to them yeah right you know, I got asked that question a few weeks ago by a, a young uh, female attorney. Mm. She said, you know, Liz, when I look at the firm, I see two, uh, two types of women. And it was really stereotypical what she saw. She saw the mother who was leaving a little bit early, who was off the fast track and would never make partner. And she saw the partner who um, was single, no children, and seemed miserable. Mm. And, uh, and I think law is a very difficult industry. but. Yes. Um, I struggled with the answer and she said to me, you know, how do I find my role models? And I thought about it actually for a couple of weeks and I've been writing about it. And I think the answer is there aren't any. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what you said. It's just a, it's a dangerous proposition. Mm. Um, and yes, there should be women that we admire and are, we, we're inspired by, but um, how do we find a role model when we all have different challenges and different interests and different stuff that we bring to the table? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I love that because uh, I think it can be really difficult and we are, yeah, we're walking our own road, aren't we? And and right. it's about embracing, much more embracing that than um, trying to follow someone else's path. I know 
if you if you know someone can do it it helps <laughs> it does help you know yeah. if I know someone's yeah. glammed at mountain I believe okay they've done it maybe I can do it too um yeah. but yeah. maybe I'll do it differently yeah you know maybe I'll take more breaks <laughs> right. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah and yet so that was um one and you also had another sort of bit of advice yeah. thank you and the other one is I've decided that the word should mm. is a four-letter word right and that it should actually be spelled s-h-u-d okay um, yeah. yeah, I think it ties into what I was just saying. But as I, as I finally found the time to write a book, um, and I figured out, you know, how do you do that with two kids and a full time job and yes. elderly parents that you care for and all that other stuff, right? Yes. That happens in life. Um, I realized that what I had to do was I had to let go of the word "should," mm. and so um, because I think when you think about the things in your head that are, you know, Liz should do this or Jenny should do that. They're actually someone else's value system yes. that is, you know, weighing on you. So for me, the shoulds were I should be a size eight, right? Or I don't know what the translation is in the UK, but I should be thinner, right? Yes. And I should yeah. be exercising more, and I should be visiting my elderly parents more, and I should be volunteering at the school more. And when you just recognize that those aren't your wants, no. those are somebody yeah. else's, and you give yourself permission to just toss them, rip them up toss them aside then you find the time to do what you really want to do and I found that on the back end some of those shoulds actually became wants and when I did them I was a much more pleasant person you know like helping my parents <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, so I think that's just a terrible word yes, terrible. yeah yeah so, and it's yeah who's creating that and whose voice is it is, is really important yeah. to spend some time reflecting on yeah, so, yeah. Do you them is or your parents or you know somebody yes yeah. or sometimes they're appropriate but you've grown out of them they're not relevant to your life now you know you the things you should have should do before you had children might have to go out the window when you do and they might change again when you retire and so yeah, it's kind of yeah. keeping re revisiting those things so your book tell me is it uh, case studies is it research is it um store you know your story what, tell us a bit more. yeah it's it's heavy research um about you know the, the statistics that show what's happening in the U.S. with women as far as housework and career advancement and where we are as far as policies for you know work life flexibility and that sort of thing and none of that data is good as you know yeah right? yeah there's a lot of work to do and then it's uh, woven throughout are the stories of the hundred women that I interviewed and not necessarily you know Jenny's story from start to finish but quotes and comments and different you know moments and times that I think really capture um, the life of a working mother and so it's written as part cautionary tale for businesses that right. if they don't recognize that these things are what's happening and what's in the heads of working women that when they come through the door at work if they don't recognize that we bring all this other stuff with us and start to build a culture that allows us to manage both that and our career aspirations, then they stand to lose out on yes. our full talent, right? And they, they see us scale back or cut back or maybe they see us walk through the door and show up every day, but we're not really showing up mm. the way we would be if they engaged us. So uh, part of it, and the other part of it, I, I call it a girlfriend book. It's a mm. um, way for women to read through these other women's stories and recognize that we're not alone. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that sounds yeah really good. And I know there is an increase in the number of female entrepreneurs in the U.S., isn't there? I do talk about entrepreneurship in the book. I have a whole chapter on women who started their own businesses and some of the challenges. But one of the things that I found most exciting about women starting their businesses is one of the number one reasons they cited for why they did is to create a work culture that works for them right. and for other women. So yes. that, I think, as we see this rise in women-owned businesses, mm. that's exciting. Yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah. yes, as long as they, if they grow it, they develop their businesses, then we'll have places to go that, that we can thrive in. So that, yeah, right. that is really positive. It's just yeah. a shame that we have to do it that way. It's a shame we have to opt out. It is a shame we have to do it that it. way. And then, of mm. course, there's the funding issue, right? Women's mm. businesses just aren't funded no. as... Uh, as much as men's businesses are but these women are doing it yes. again it, yeah, yeah. No, I think it is really impressive and uh, yeah. yeah I think yeah. it's going to give us some power that we need actually to be at the top of organizations and make things exactly. happen yeah exactly. so it's yeah. a very 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 positive and I'm, I'm pleased to hear it's really growing in the UK as well oh, uh, the number of women who are running their own businesses the increase in women's networks um, you know mm. women creating their own sort of girls clubs as opposed to the, yeah. as opposed to the yeah. boys club so yeah yeah I feel very positive about the future. Good, 
Mm. I so, do too. So where next? Where what what do you plan to do? Is it uh, to, you know touring the book and sharing the message? Is it doing something more with the the content of the book? What do you what do you see as your future? I see so many opportunities. I'm not quite sure exactly where. I'm only a few weeks into this, but I will tell you that you know I talked to a hundred women to write the book. Mm. Since then, I've talked to hundreds more, and so I do feel like the book is a living thing, right? Yes. Because every time I go out and speak to groups of women, I get more information, more inspiration. Um, so probably short term, I will be um, building out the content on Hello Ladies. I've been doing a series of interviews. I call them the M3, the Mogul Mom Aid interviews. Did one of you? Yeah. And um, and and people are really responding. It they love to hear how women are thinking through their challenges. And you've all been so honest and generous in what you're saying. So I think the authenticity helps. And um, yeah, so I'd love to spread the message. I'd love to go out and talk to more women and and talk through the challenges that there are no role models, that there's no one model of success, right? That we can have it all, but we've got to pace ourselves and make hard choices. Yes. And then next is to go into businesses and talk to the business owners about what do we do to keep women at work. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, really taking ownership and making change happen. Can I ask yeah. a personal question? How old are your children? Sure, they are 9 and 11, nine so I do 11. think that I think this is an easy age. I think this was mm. the sweet spot. To write yes. the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better age. And are they very proud to have you as an author? They go back and forth between very proud and, you know, they both have copies of the book. And then sometimes they hear the B word and they roll their eyes. You know, <laughs> can we talk about something else? <laughs> they will be. They will Which be very normal. proud. Yeah. Because I think yeah. there's something about having girls as a mum that um, encourages you to do something for them for the future. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, I actually have a son and a daughter, which oh, is a big fact. Oh, right. I thought it was girls. Okay. No, to, to see how, you know, how hopefully I can make an impact on both genders, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, make a, make a big difference there. So yeah. any last messages, anything else that you'd like to share in terms of just helping women in business who'll be listening and um, engaging through this interview? I would just encourage women to really figure out their own version of success. And it's not easy, right? It's hard to put the blinders on and really just think about yourself but it's so freeing when you do and then of course my number one message to women is to put down that mop at home yes do a little less housework yes. you know and see what what kind of time and energy it frees up for you to do what you really love yes okay yeah. brilliant I think that's that's great advice and uh, yeah get some help if you can get help get help um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and when you do get help, if you are able to, don't clean before they come, <laughs> as a lot of women tell me they do. <laughs> that, that came out in the book loud really? and clear. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes we can be our own worst enemy there. Exactly. It's been exactly. really great to talk to you. I can't wait to read the book. And, you know, it does sound so extensive in terms of the research that you've done. And, you know, what I've noticed from my work is that it seems like the US, Australia and the UK seem the the journey the women on seem really, really similar. So I, I think women in the UK um, will definitely, you know, your messages will resonate with them. Um, and what's lovely is we've found that actually, uh, I don't mean to stereotype, but we have found that women in the US seem to be a little bit more open about their experience and sharing it. And that's so helpful. Um, yeah, that's so helpful to us. And maybe it will encourage us to be open too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So thank you so much. Keep rocking your role in work and life and wishing you real success with your book. Thanks so much. And have a great day. Yeah, you too. Take care.